Alrighty, the man wants a podcast. He's gonna. Oh no! Here we go. <laughs> we are rolling out. Is this what? Is this gonna be episode one of your podcast? Oh, I've actually got one. I did my brother for my very first one. You did your brother. What did he say uh, afterwards? What's that, sorry? Was he satisfied with your performance? <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. Okay, <laughs> what's your podcast called? Hammerbed? Hammerbed and Friends. Hammerbed and Friends. All right, am I your friend? Uh, we'll establish that, depending how this conversation goes. <laughs> I've already accused you of incest. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's not a good start, dude. Fantastic. Well, what, how does this work? We chat, do you interview me, do I interview you? It's your, it's your party, dude. Um, okay. Well, no, like, I think we've always talked about the religion thing, but I'd like to talk to you about some of the subjects I'm probably more passionate about and we haven't <laughs> covered, just to hear what you think. Let's talk about anything other than religion and atheism, both <laughs> are a brain disease. I will guarantee we get there. But... Okay. You know, something I'm actually generally passionate about. It'd be interesting to hear your perspective. And I don't know how much experience you've had with it. And it's drugs. Now the drugs don't work. <laughs> make you worse. Uh, yeah, dude. Okay. okay. So no, so like more. I'm talking about like psychedelics. Well, I mean, drugs in general are interesting, but it is like interesting to hear. What, what's that? Sorry. Peyote. Peyote. What you've done, peyote? No. <laughs> oh, damn it. But yeah, no, no so that's a good example. Ayahuasca is the big one in LA. Yeah, ayahuasca. I ha- I do have lots of things to say about this, by the way. Okay, I'd love to hear it, though. Because just when you say drugs, people are like, oh, what? Ooh, well, like myth. So it's interesting that there's yeah, already that bias there. It's funny, on a, on a media sort of level, like Breaking Bad kind of yeah. characterize drugs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm not even fundamentally opposed to those drugs. I mean, that's something we'll go talk about later, I guess. I, well, Russell Brand talks about the idea of handling your high. Right. You know, if you can handle the high, then go nuts. I, I think... I think... I mean, so if I came to you and I was like, you know, hey, Mark, my buddy, here's some LSD. I mean, would you take it? Would you be reserved? Like, what would be going through your head at well, that I can, point? Okay, so I can give a bit of an analogy here. The, okay. The first time, because I grew up without alcohol. And oh, right. yeah, still okay. without it to the So it would have been quite forbidden to you almost there, eh? like almost like a oh, drug. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, it was right, totally yeah. taboo. So I remember the very first time I had a shot of uh, uh, flaming Zambuca. <laughs> and I was in a I was in a bar in a sort of a place in Hamilton with some backpackers. Oh god, that's not a good start to a story. Yeah. And uh, ironically, I was the one that had convinced them to come out. And annoyingly, I got the girl, one of the girls to come out with us. And she ended up hooking up with the other guy who was a dick. And I was like, oh, well, he not... wasn't a dick. He's, you know, one of those guys, you can't hate them. That you, oh, yeah. Yep. Because they're not a dick. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you, you mean. You go, oh, if you. Um, her name was Lucy, actually. I still remember her name. <laughs> how sad. How sad. How sad. How sad. Um, Moving on. So, yeah, no, um, this whole ayahuasca thing, Peter Rollins talks about this, this idea of... Oh, he's quite anti-drugs, isn't he? He's the black flag singer that went straight edge. You're talking like... about Henry Rollins. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. I just heard Rollins. No, Peter Rollins. Oh, sorry. <laughs> black flag. Oh, hilarious. Oh, shit, that's embarrassing. Every name I'm going to quote, you won't know them, okay? No, I probably won't. So, so Peter Rollins talks about this idea. He lives out in LA, and he sort of basically he argues this point that, that the, these drugs like ayahuasca really get sold to you in the form of a religion. Like, you need this. This is what, this is what you're missing in life. It's the same as a. Christian person saying you're missing Jesus, you know, it's okay. this missing peace. And he kind of says like, and, and it's, this would be interesting to throw back at you as a bit of a curveball. Mm. He, he sort of argues for this life that isn't happy all the time. He's like, we sort of have this notion that we should be happy all the time. Well, that's ridiculous. No, oh, we shouldn't. Oh. Yeah. You know? And I think based on your videos and what I've seen so far, you seem to be very grounded in the idea that life has pain sometimes that's completely unavoidable. Oh, absolutely. I don't think I've ever said that, but of course. I mean, that is who would deny that? 
Lots and lots and lots. Unfortunately, of yes. No, but I would, I would like to go back to that question I asked you, just because I want to know what you actually think. So if I came up to you and said, Mark, here's some LSD. I mean, would you say yes? Would you say no? What would be your well, thought process? Well, I certainly process? wouldn't say yes off the bat. Bad. Okay. But what would be your thought process? Like, I can't do this. Uh, okay. It's going to... situation. If I see you in a bar and you've just taken some and you're off your tits, I'd go, okay, that looks cool. I'll give it a go. You see... Can, if, you're, know, if you're lying in a pool and vomit shit and <laughs> of course. I'm probably gonna like not listen to you. So, and, and what you said there, I think, is the fundamental problem with drugs. Where you said, if I saw you in a bar, that should never be the situation to be taking things like LSD. Why? Because it is not. I mean, despite what the media sells you and like dickhead stoner people tell you. You should not be anywhere near a party, loud noises. I think so, It is not a party drug. <laughs> what you should be doing is <laughs> silently <laughs> like meditating and going off into nature and trying to find you know, answers to questions. But that's unfortunately the way we think, is that it needs to be a party. You know, we're just on that constant <laughs> mindset. Like, again, you know, sorry to, sh- you know, to shamelessly plug Peter Rollins again. <laughs> He says, he says this thing right. I love here. Black Black. They're great. Um, if you go to a nightclub at like 10 a.m. Uh, 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Yeah. Breakfast, <laughs> breakfast, breakfast uh, on, on tap. Um, <laughs> no. At 10 p.m., 11 p.m., everyone's sort of kicking off. Or, uh, he goes, if you get there at 1 or 2 in the, in the morning, he goes, if you turn the lights on and mm. dull the music, he goes, people would probably have to look at, they'd have to look at each other in the eyes and they'd probably start crying. Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. Because the most broken people, you know, um, again, he tells a story about a friend of his who was depressed, and she didn't think she was depressed, and the doctor says, yeah, you sound depressed, and she goes, but I go out all the time with friends alone. And he goes, yeah, that's exactly what a depressed person would do. Yes, very true. So what I was trying to get to the point to is, so these drugs are very important to go off on your own and do spiritual journeys. Like, it's essentially filling in the gaps of religion, no. Oh, okay. No, maybe I didn't phrase that very no, well. No, 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 no. No, because you're arguing because all these these religious practices that incorporate the, all all of this. Okay. Okay. Let me let me phrase this far more better. So there is religious practices where you can sit, say, you know, at the pulpit and pray and have very transformative and important experiences. You can be, you know, an African okay, tribesman. Oh, anyway. Okay, you can meet an African tribesman, jump around a fire for three days, and have very transformative hallucinogenic experiences. But if we take these certain substances, they are going to guarantee us like a uh, realm into that sort of field. I mean, yeah, sorry, guarantee right. exactly. It's selling yeah. happiness, and it's it's making. But they're not always happy. That's why I don't like this idea that it's party party. You know, it, it, that's not what it is. Oh, if you've not- ever taken them, it is not what they are in any Isn't sense. That the one that makes you shit yourself. Lexus? <laughs> no, I wash can make you shit your pants. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, so this is guy Graham Hancock, right? If you haven't heard him, look him up. He's awesome. And he's done this, and he calls it the purge because it's, you know, he's middle class sort of Englishman going into the jungle. And it's, you know, I all my inhibitions were lost because I'm there on my floor, yeah, on the yeah. floor, shitting myself, spewing, and it's sort of the first lesson oh, of it. I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that idea. I don't know that we all have to have it physically. Maybe we do. But to make it, it, it's like, you're sort of, and I make no apologies for Bible references, but I was talking <laughs> to someone about this. I think I was talking to the Vandys about it. Um, there's, a, there's the transfiguration of Jesus on the mount. Mm. They see a vision of Moses and Elijah. And their immediate response was, should we build a shack? Like, should we build a tabernacle here? Like, should we mm. set up shop here? And he's like, going, no, you doofuses. Like, this is just a metaphor. It's a sign. And Russell Brand says the same thing about religion. He says, mm. um, religion is a signpost to the unknowable. It's, he goes, it's kind of in that direction. But yeah. I wonder, because you're not sounding like what you're saying. I'm basically agreeing with everything you're saying right now. Oh, you've come on board. I'm glad to hear about no, it. No, no, no. It's not, <laughs> not at all. It's not that I've come on board. I've been on board this whole conversation. <laughs> And I'm and I'm sort of scratching my head, going, "Okay, I might use the label Christian, you might not, but we're saying the same thing here." Absolutely, no, absolutely. So there is very transformative experiences that people have, 
and you know whether in the past they've labeled that into christianity most or can i say something against religion that you'll totally agree with oh yeah i'd love it um <laughs> religion religion in the world today is practice doesn't create space typically for transcendent experiences it's no unfortunately stuff. That should be its primary role. And, and, that's, and, and given McKenna's holler that to me when he says, you know, Jesus Christ, he goes, I get to exist. You know, you, you stand. Yeah, that was beautiful. And, how he and did that. I want that. And, 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 and I think here, okay, here, let's throw something out here. The whole social justice warrior label. Right. I think we're all a little bit social justice warrior on different issues. And I think mm. the term social justice warrior has become as bastardized term to throw on anyone that disagrees with you. And yeah, well, it's funny because what's wrong with social justice, right? <laughs> like exactly. Yeah. I yeah. See, I liked your videos from the beginning because I was like, you're not, you haven't drunk the Kool Aid all the way on the, mm. you know, like you, you don't make videos about feminism. Have you even made one? No, because it's it's been done, and there's oh, plenty of people. And yes. It, it's yes. done to death, though. This is why I'm so glad to call you my first and probably <laughs> only fan, because um, <laughs> we need to catch up for a beer sometime. Oh, we do, man. I've got one right now, but yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> Metaphorically. But, um, oh, no, absolutely. So, so, what's your next question? Okay, so I covered drugs. Um, I, this is not something I'm particularly passionate about, but it's, it's quite an interesting thing to go down. Like, I did a video on veganism, right? Oh, God. Yeah, no, so I'm not a vegan, but... Like if I'm, you're right. There's <laughs> the veggies and you're oh, God. on the floor. <laughs> gonna go cook up some dead animal. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's interesting because how people respond to it, right? So like, I'm not a vegan. I'm a hypocrite, by the way. But I do annoying. Quite... Yes, they are. But let's put that aside for a second. It is the most moral position we could take, right? It's not morally defensible to be actually a meat eater. What? See, this is you self-loathing but... beta male shit. No, 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 so Mark, Mark, hear me out. Tell me, like, so you how it? could you possibly justify eating meat? Because it tastes good. So you would kill a conscious animal because it tastes good? Absolutely. <laughs> and that's where the conversation is. No, if you admit it, then I've got nothing to say. But it's just <laughs> interesting. I don't it's think, I think that, well, according to the Bible, I think that we were given domain over the animal. Oh, okay, see, I could never argue that point. If you believe <laughs> genuinely... Then yeah, uh, you're gone to the untouchable realm. <laughs> it can be too, it can be challenged. Um, oh, oh, I'm not going to argue with God. Fucking knows why he wasn't me. Trumped. Yeah, <laughs> it's my trump card. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, but I just find interesting how people react, like, much like you did. I know it's. Too- should we do a little? Yeah. Should we do a little five minute spiel on old Trumpy? Oh, you want to talk about Trump? Yep. Yeah. I'll just do a five minute spiel. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the old wig van? Oh, old wig man. No, I, I do like Trump, and it's not because Milo's turning around onto him. But I guess the thing I'm more scared of, right, is because... So we've got all this SJW crap, and there's this big pushback, you know, against that, and that's why Trump's so popular right now. Yeah. But, so, now we've got these sentiments like, build the wall, you know, Mexicans are rapists, whatever it is, and people are generally soaking that up and loving it. So if he loses, right, and, say, Hillary wins, and it's four more years of the same shit... Imagine the rhetoric out of the next candidate. Imagine how hateful and spiteful and even more reactionary and far right it's going to be. You think Donald Trump is hateful? Um, no, I don't. But I think the people that support him are doing it for that perceived idea that he's this. You know, I don't give a fuck. No, 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 no. You, you, you. Well, people no, so that, there are intellectual people that don't do it for that reason. But I imagine the bulk, the ones that are voting in the caucuses and such, are those kind of people. I don't think so at all. But, um, no. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, I want to give you... I'll give you an exclusive, eh? Ooh. I will, I will confess something to you. Oh, no. I'm getting... No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, no it. it is to do with... Well, it's about Milo. And, um... So, I did the 48-hour live stream with... You know, I, you know, I was trying to do this big free speech thing. Yeah, I do remember it, yeah. And I, you know, we were spamming Milo and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, long story short, he disconnected with me on Skype. And I was kind of gutted. It was very traumatic. I was like, oh, no, like your hero has said no to you, you know? Yeah. Oh, that'd be horrible. And then, no, no, it's fine. I woke up the next day and I was like, oh, that was the best thing that could have ever happened. But then he, um, <laughs> I jumped in on one of his live streams and he goes... And I was just like coming in, guns are blazing. Oh, ha ha, New Zealand, how's your dangerous faggot to a blow? And I was just like, 
manic as hell. <laughs> and he goes, oh, he goes, oh god. And he's like, oh, you've got to go. And he goes, oh, it's been fun. And then he ejected me. Whoa. Okay. And we kind of had a breakup. Yeah. But but no no no, it had to happen first of all. And and Milo, if you ever do listen to this short little podcast, I am sincerely sorry because. I, I tried to turn it all around and go, I was worried for him. I was like, is he on drugs? He looks like, he looks like he's been at a funeral. Like, and I actually emailed Gavin McInnes because I was concerned. And, um, but no, I, I just, I just want to put that out there. And, and yeah, like genuinely half, I'd apologize because, um, yeah, I mean. I, so Milo, what he's trying to say is it's not you, it's him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But no, I I love what Milo's doing. I'm glad we didn't talk about him, you know, before now, and, you know, because we've got a. This is the whole thing. I'll close with this quote from uh, from uh, Breitbart. I'll paraphrase it. But Andrew Breitbart, you know, the late Andrew Breitbart, mm. who I've been told would have loved me, um, <laughs> says, um, "Walk toward the fire. Don't be afraid. All those things they call they call you are said because they want to stop you dead in your tracks." When you keep going, you're sending a, sending a message to, to others um, who are rooting for you, and the message is that they can do it too. And I just want to say in closing, to Hammer Beard, cheers, <laughs> first of all, I'm raising my glass to you. Cheers. Um, and I'm glad that this is a formation of a good Kiwi friendship, and let's do a barbecue one day. And, um, <laughs> I'll bring my sheep, you bring yours. Yeah, yeah, totally. But <laughs> no, do, awesome, man. Do you want to close us out with a with a karaoke or something?